Okay, today I'm going to teach you how to use a test light and how to check a fuse on your car in case you have an emergency, your car shuts off or something like that. So today I'm going to explain to you about a fuse and about really how it works and this maybe can save you your, your trip, you know, a decent trip or you don't have to break your head and maybe this can help you in the future. So what I have, I have a battery, 12 volt battery. I have a fuse box on my Honda Civic 2000. Okay, test light. This is a test light and it's a very handy tool to keep in your car. If it's a handy person going on trips and stuff like that, it's something you might want to consider sticking with you because this could maybe save your trip and save you a lot of, you know, disaster down the line. Because most time, when a car shut down something, it can be just a simple fuse that controls something that needs to run at the same time. But after the fuse burns, that thing cannot keep your car running. Let's say, for example, you have your fuel pump fuse burning, then your car is going to shut down. You have your computer fuse burning, the car is going to shut down. And you have other fuse that, main fuse that run other stuff, other electrical parts that need the car to keep running. Okay? So, let's start by showing you how to set up this stuff. So what I did, I take a fuse out, the fuse box, so I take it out of the car, so we're gonna do the test on the table and how you're supposed to be doing it on the car. But this is not the car, so first thing when you're gonna check a fuse in your car, you need to turn your ignition to the on position. Do not start the car and make sure that the light in the dash, they are all on, okay? And so basically when you're checking fuse, you're checking for power, okay? So these are your fuse in here, and these are the relay, okay? So I'm going to tell you the function of your fuse. Your fuse is to, it's a protection device that protect your car from burning up, protect your wire from burning. So if you have a shot anyway, what's going to happen? It's going to burn the fuse. So, and when the fuse burn, what it's doing is protecting that component, protecting your rager, protecting your defrost, protecting your wiper, whatever it is the fuse is controlling, is protecting that device, okay? So now you want that device to work. So you will have to find the fuse and replace it, okay? And now you have relays, okay? Relay. So the relay purpose is to send power or ground so any electrical component like a motor, your headlight, your wiper, your fuel pump, because this this stuff cannot have direct power. Because these fuse are direct power. Some stuff can have direct power, but some stuff cannot have direct power. Because if you have direct power, they're gonna be on. When you leave your car, your wiper gonna keep working, and so you need something to shut it off when you turn the key off. Okay, so that's why you use a relay. A relay only activate when you're gonna use that stuff, a heated seat or a heated mirror or whatever. Then when you activate the relay. Because you cannot get direct power on certain motor like a fuel pump. That means if you have direct power, it's gonna be keep running all the time. Okay? It wouldn't shut off. So that's why the relay come in to shut that power off when you turn the key off and to put the power on when the key is on. That's why you have the relay. So the fuel send the power to the relay. And then when you turn your ignition or you activate a switch, then that switch send the power to the relay and then the relay send the power out to whatever to activate whatever you want to work. You just move seat, move back and front, stuff like that, okay? Window up and down, everything has a relay because you cannot send power direct. Fuse send power direct to the component, right? And the one them that cannot take direct power is going to go to a relay, okay? So your fuse box, you should uh, look up or you have your manual in the car, you should know where it is. It's a good idea. So this one is in the engine compartment. You can have some in the driver's side, depends on your manufacturer. You can have some in the glove compartment behind and you can have some on your right right um, kick panel by your right foot at the bottom. Okay. Like I said, depending on your manufacturer design, you should look it up and it can save you a lot of trouble. Okay. On a summer vacation or wind, uh, winter day, depends on your problem you leave for a trip or something. It's a very good tool to have and it's very 
easy and she should know how to test it. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to put the power on the fuse box. Okay. So when you're checking fuse, you need to connect the test light to the ground, not the passive. Connect your test light to the ground. You turn the ignition on. Connect your test light. Okay. Connect it to the ground. Okay. Like that. Then what you do, you take the tip of it, connect it to the positive. What we're checking for, make sure that we have a good ground. Because if you don't have a good ground, it's light. But if you don't have a good ground, it's not going to light, right? So this tell me I have a good ground, okay? And that's the ground is very important for this to work, all right? So now we're going to check our fuse. So what we have here, the first two big fuse, are, you know, you can see properly. The first two big fuse here, we call them the main fuse, all right? The main fuse is what's supplying the smaller fuse here. So if the main fuse burn, you will have no power to your vehicle, all right? So that's why when someone gives you a boost, and for example, you, you make a wrong connection on your, your cable, what's gonna happen, your main fuse is gonna burn. One out of these two is gonna burn, right? And then I know you're gonna go into panic because right now your vehicle has no power. See, and that is for a reason. Let's for example, you don't have a main fuse there. What's gonna happen? You're gonna be burning all your wiring in the car, all right? So, now let's say you're stuck somewhere for, for example you went on a trip somewhere you're stuck somewhere or you went to the grocery and this happened someone or your friend boosts you they put a cable around don't panic first thing you're going to be doing you're going to be checking your main fuse open the fuse box you're checking the main fuse okay so the top of the fuse all of them the big fuse they could come out okay you, you take something you un you unclip it. Cool. Okay, you take out the top of it. You don't have a fuse to replace it. Remember? You don't have a fuse to replace it. So what you're going to be doing, you're going to be looking at the two fuses. You're going to see exactly where it's broke. And then all you have to do is bend, bend the two of them to make them touch. Okay? When they touch, now you're going to have, the, the power is going to come back in your system. Then you boost your car correctly, then after you go to the garage and get the fuse change, okay? That's one way you can save you a lot of trouble, okay? Now, checking the fuse. Okay, we're going to check the fuse. So, when you're checking fuse, you're going to put your test light. Let me show you. The fuse has two pins, right? And only one side of the pin has current. But the current transfer to the other wire. The other pin is the wire that take the power out to your light to, or to the relay. So now if you have a broken pin, broken fuse, fuse, there is no connection. No power can go out. So whatever this fuse control, it would not, it would not work until you replace it to make the connection there. Okay? And you have to know fuse, they come by amperage. They have a three, five, ten. 15, 20, 25, 30, 7.5. The big one, you have 30, 40, 20, 80, 60, 100, 120, and so forth. All right? Those are the sizes. I recommend you put back the same fuse. Okay? So what happened now? You're testing the fuse. And one pin has power. And the second pin, no power. So you know that this fuse is burning. Right? So, you're checking the fuse again, one pin has power, the second pin has power, the fuse is good. You're checking the pin, there's three stages to that. One, you check the pin, there's no power, and there's no power. That means the fuse is good too. Because some fuse need to activate by you putting on your light, or you, do, you put on something that could activate the power to the fuse. So, as long as you have no light on both pins, it's good. If you have light on both pins, it's good. The only way that you know the fuse is bad, only if you have one light on, on one of the pins and the other one don't have. So you know your fuse is broke. So you cannot, there's no power, all right? So 
we're going to check here now for the fuse. We're going to be testing each fuse like that, one by one. Okay? See when it's like that one, two pin, that's mean it's good. Okay? That's mean it's good. It's like that one, two pin. Alright? Now if I come here, it doesn't light up here. That could be a spare fuse. There's no light there. And there's no light there. So that means that fuse is good. So all the fuses are good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna maybe burn a fuse. And that's one. So now what happened? Let's say for example you find the fuse that born, okay? The fuse born for some reason. If you just don't just born because it's one of born. So now we have to imagine what the problem was, what the why the fuse born. Okay? It can be you're pulling something too much. Or let's say a, let's say a wiper, a fuse born and wiper is not working. You go and you check the fuse is born. It can be that your wiper motor is no good, that it's pulling too much amperage from the fuse, if the fuse is a 50 now. Okay, the only way I recommend you not to put a fuse there or to even put a bigger fuse, sometimes you can get away with a bigger fuse, but if you take a fuse, the one that is born, you find the born fuse for example, right, and then you take the born fuse out, now you put in the same amperage, if it's 15, you put 15. Okay, you put a 15 fuse, you put it in there, and then you turn on your wiper, the wiper working, and then it's born. That means your wiper has a problem. Okay, then so how are you gonna check that now? You have to go put the fuse, it is born right away. Put the fuse, disconnect your wiper motor, and plug the fuse back, and the wiper and it didn't burn. So you know that the problem is the wiper motor. Just keep burning the fuse. You have a short in the motor. But for example, if you put in a fuse, and as soon as you put the fuse in, you see spark, it's going like instantly. Do not mess with that fuse. Take your car to the garage and get that car checked out. Because there is a short somewhere, something is touching somewhere. But if you have some scales that you can check, you know, you can Go on the fuse cover, or you have to go on your wiring diagram and you have to see what this really stands for doing what your fuse is for, okay? What, what, what this fuse control, okay? Because every fuse in here has something that is controlling or something it's sending power to. So then you have to trace it, what is for it, for your brake light, for your horn, and so many things. You have to check it. So when you find the source of what is controlling this fuse, then you can start your problem solving from there, okay? So so what you're gonna be doing, let's say it's control the brake light, and as soon as you put it, it burn right away. And why it's never good to put a bigger fuse when you have a situation like that, what's gonna happen? Your fuse now gonna be stronger, and these are electric wire, what's gonna happen? They're gonna heat up so much, right? When they heat up, they melt, and then they fuse this together, you have all the, the skin of the wire, like this. You see how this is the protective coating. But now, what happened? It burned out this plastic. And now you have the positive and negative touching. And when you put the fuse like that, then you're going to create a serious problem. You're going to create it. You can burn your whole the wiring harness on your car, and then you will have to replace that. And that's a big job. I did it one time on a Volkswagen before they used to burn up very often back in like about 15 years ago. They had a electrical problem like that. And just put a fuse and shoot, the whole car went up in smoke. Okay, so that is the problem. Do not, do not continue if you see that the fuse burn right away in your hand when you stick it back in that place. And that's the way you check it. You go to the source of what the fuse control and try to disconnect it. Like your brake light, try to check the light. 
okay and try to see when you take out all the brake light and you go back you plug the fuse the fuse didn't burn then you know there's some shot in one of the light and you have to do that from light to light until you find the source that work until this fuse stop burning okay same thing for a radio let's for example a radio is burning the fuse all the time you have to go to the radio disconnect it put back the fuse and see if the fuse burn if the fuse don't burn then you know your problem is the radio so every component that the, a fuse control that's where you go and you go and you check that stuff one by one it's take time that's what we call electrical problem a lot of people don't like to do it because it's time consuming and you will have to pay a garage a lot of money to fix this problem for you okay so that's it about the fuse box and what they control and how it's work okay so now you know you could go out and get yourself a test light and go in your car and try the same thing like I did here and in case of any situation you have you know how to check a fuse for example you check all the fuse and they are good well then you have to call the tow truck CAA to get your car to a garage because your problem is more than a fuse all right so subscribe to my channel and like and there will be more tips on how to